A blessed and holy good morning to each and every one of you gathered here and joining us worshiping online. It is a good day, is it not? How are your hearts today? They're great? Well, amen to that. I will uh, try to help them stay great, and I'm sure they will be. Uh, a few announcements. Um, Throughout Advent, we are having a Thursday evening study uh, on Zoom, Thursday evenings at 7 p.m., where we talk about the uh, themes from the worship of the prior week. So today we're going to be talking about peace, and this Thursday we will uh, continue that discussion. Uh, if you need the link for Zoom, um, please let me or, or Brenda know, and we will make sure you get that. On December 17th at 3 p.m. will be the uh, Christmas Cantata, Night of Miracles, by John W. Peterson. Uh, it will be at Ridge United Methodist Church, and um, I uh, hope that you uh, try to uh, make plans to attend. Last year it was just amazing, and I'm sure this year it will be uh, even more so. Our neighbors right across the street this way, First United Evangelical Lutheran Church, have invited us to participate with them in their annual Living Nativity. So some of us will, will definitely be there, but I invite uh, you, if you have any interest in being a part of the Living Nativity, either as one of the characters, or uh, they also have a... Uh, event going on inside where they provide coffee, tea, hot chocolate, hot cider, and cookies, and uh, do some carol singing, and uh, just greet people and from the neighborhood as they come. So um, I invite you to, to pray about participating in that. The more volunteers we have for the outside part, the shorter period of time any one person has to be out there because we can take shifts. And I think it's a great opportunity to get to know our uh, friends at First United Evangelical Lutheran, uh, one of whom is my, the husband of my mother-in-law's lifelong best friend. So, um, and and uh, we love them even if they are Lutheran, um, but uh, what's that? Oh, sorry, I didn't tell you that. Uh, it's Friday, December 22nd. Uh, the event is from 7 to 9 p.m., uh, but people participating uh, will gather at 6.30 uh, next door. And on Christmas Eve, um, we will be worshiping at 10.15 in the morning at Woodmar and at 7 p.m. here. Uh, there are two different services, so um, if you come to both, you're not going to get over-churched. So I want to put your mind at ease about that. Um, the uh, evening service here will be uh, readings and carols uh, along with uh, communion. And that Sunday morning when we're at Woodmar, that will be the first Sunday of our ongoing worship with Woodmar every Sunday. So we will be at Woodmar worshiping at 10.15 a.m. every Sunday through January and February 
we will all be back here worshiping and we will alternate month to month. When we are at Woodmar worshiping, please uh, bring your giving envelope or give online or drop it off in the office. Um, going a month without getting an offering would just be not very sustainable. Um, so if you have offering envelopes, please use them because we'll need to separate them from uh, the Woodmar offering. And uh, if you do not have envelopes, we will have envelopes at Woodmar for you to use, or you can uh, talk to Larry to make sure that you uh, get your own set of envelopes. Any loose change that goes into the plates will be just split 50-50 between the two churches. Um, also, please note that January 3rd, will be the last day to get your offering in for it to count for 2023 for your uh, tax purposes. So um, make sure you get your offering in by January 3rd and um, you can mail that in, bring it to the office, put it in the plate at Woodmar or give online through Tithely. And now I would like to invite uh, Roseanne and Terry to come forward for our Advent candle lighting. We celebrate the peace God brings us through God's presence. On this second Sunday in Advent, we light the candle of peace and remember that we can have peace because of who God is. As this is the Sunday of peace. And as we know, there is a need for more peace in our world. In Bethlehem, this Advent season, they are not lighting the traditional Christmas lights to remind people of the death that has affected so many people in the land of the Holy One. And it was suggested by some, not in this church, that we too not light the peace candle in solidarity with the uh, Israelis and the Palestinians and the land of the Holy One, as well as with the Ukrainians and Russians and all the people in the world who are suffering violence in this holy season. But we felt, and a few days later, our bishop sent a letter expressing the same feeling, that in the darkness of this world, we need more light, not less light. And so we light a peace candle from the Holy Land to remind us of the need for peace and to remind us of the one from whom our peace comes, our Lord Jesus Christ. Together we, celebrate, together we celebrate God, the great I am. We celebrate the peace God brings us through his presence. Hear the words of Paul from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Roseanne and Terry. And I now invite Carrie to come forward to uh, lead us in our... Uh, called to worship and opening prayer. Good morning.
Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Come and see. The, the light, light of God, God has come, come into our, our world to, to proclaim God's, God's justice and love. It, it overcomes the darkness and brings new life. Come and follow. Christ, Christ our, our companion, companion has redeemed our world. He draws us into a loving family from every tribe and family and culture. Go and tell. The Spirit has equipped us for service to love our neighbors as we do ourselves and to bring God's salvation to the ends of the earth. Come and see, come and follow, go and tell. In God's love, the nations of the earth will we'll find, find peace. peace. Our opening hymn is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, found in the hymnal to number 211. Please stand as you are comfortable. be seated. While we are waiting, come to us, O God. Reveal your presence in our time of worship. Guide our steps in our speaking and our doing. Flow through our lives, our church, and our world with your steadfast love, unending faithfulness, righteous justice, and mysterious peace. In patient anticipation, we pray. Amen. Now it's time for the children's sermon.
Oh, wow, we have quite a crowd. Boy, it's really nice to see everybody this morning. Jonah, are those new glasses? My, you look handsome in those glasses, Guy. I like them. Well, this week, we're going to talk about Emma, and we're going to talk about getting ready for Jesus. Well, this week, Emma and her friends learned about a prophet named John the Baptist. Now, let me give you a little bit of background information on John. His parents were Zacharias and Elizabeth. They actually thought they were too old to have children, but God decided to give them a special blessing. Now, John was not just any person. He had a special job. God had a special job for John to do. Oh, and let me mention, people kind of thought John was a little bit weird. Um, John would eat wild locusts and honey. Um, just to give you an idea of something, something he kind of eat, I brought along a little recipe of things, didn't have time to go out and find wild locusts, but I had these left over from Halloween, just some little eyeball-y things. And I thought that if we took these and put these in a plate, and I brought some peanut butter. Who doesn't like peanut butter? Peanut butter and eyeballs. Can't you get it? Ew. But what about barbecue sauce? No? Mustard? No. No? Well, I guess I have to save this for Pastor Jim. I know, I know he'll be um, watching the bears after service, so he'll need a snack. But um, let's, let's get back to talking about um, John the Baptist. He was a bit strange, but he had a very important job. His job was to prepare the people to receive Jesus. He preached many sermons and he baptized a lot of people. He even baptized Jesus. He wanted to help, prepare, help people prepare their hearts to receive Jesus. Now think about the things we do to prepare for Christmas. We all know that it's Jesus's birthday, but a lot of people are thinking more about buying presents, going to parties, decorations, and now there's nothing wrong with those things because our church looks very beautiful, doesn't it? But we want to make sure, just like what John preached, that we make Christmas a time of both celebration and preparation. Remember that John, what John told the people of Israel. He told them, let's get ready to accept the greatest gift that God has ever, ever given. Let's get ready to, to accept and celebrate Jesus. So this is just one thing I want you to think about as we prepare. What do we need to do to get ready for Jesus? Let us pray. Dear God, I want to be like John the Baptist. Help me to prepare my heart and mind for the gift of Jesus. And may I show to others the love you have given us through the sharing of your marvelous gift. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, do we have a Bible verse? Okay, who would like to do our Bible verse for us? John, since we're talking about John's, we'll pick on John. Pray continually. First Thessalonians 5. Pray continually. Okay, before you go back, so since you don't want my dessert, I'll give you another treat. And thank you, Miss Pat and uh,
Make sure I don't leave here without my eyeballs. Okay. <laughs> now we come to the time where we share with one another the concerns that are on our minds and hearts so that we can together lift those heavy things up to God in prayer that we might find peace. As we prepare for our time of prayer, we will sing our prayer hymn, which is Spirit of God, Descend Upon My Heart, number 500 in the hymnal. And as we sing, uh, please uh, feel free to fill out the uh, prayer cards in the pew in front of you. I will be collecting those, or you can hand them to an usher while we sing. For those of us worshiping online, you may put your uh, prayer requests in the comments section. And we will pray for all of these things throughout this week. Now let us uh, prepare as we sing, Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. As we pray today, Ansley asks for prayers for her pre friend Peter, who is very sick. Uh, he is in the hospital with pneumonia. Uh, Shar asks for prayers for Dave. He is having a hip replacement surgery tomorrow. And uh, Bobby would like us to uh, give thanks to God for this is the day that he has made, that we might rejoice and be glad in it. And Pat and uh, Pauline ask for prayers for Rosalie, who is having health issues. Uh, pray for healing for Rosalie. And uh, let us also remember to pray for all those who are listed on the back of the bulletin in our uh, prayer concerns. Um, in particular, we will be adding Susan Bravo to that list. Um, so uh, keep Susan. Uh, Mario's already on there. Uh, Susan is having some ongoing health issues as well. And um, pray for those who are, in our, uh, who are in residential facilities or those who are homebound, especially in this time of year when uh, loneliness often becomes uh, more acute. Let us take all of these things and those unspoken things that are in our minds and our hearts to our Lord in prayer. God of peace, help us to know 
your peace. So often in this life, the trials, the troubles, the difficulties, the worries, the spats, the finances, the family, we find so many ways to let go of your peace. Help us, Lord, to know that the source of peace is your presence with us. We pray, Lord, that your peaceful presence be with all of those that we have named this morning, with all of those anywhere who are suffering with illness, who are suffering from violence, who are suffering from loss and grief, who are suffering from uncertainty, from doubt. Help us, Lord, to put our whole trust in you knowing that you are the source of all healing, that you make everyone whole who turns to you. And help us, Lord, to understand that your wholeness is different from the limited way that we understand being made whole, being healed. May we also, Lord, be sent by you into the world, to one another, to friends and family and strangers alike, that we might bear your peace to others, that we might witness to the light that is coming into the world that we celebrate in this time of Advent. Help us, Lord, to truly prepare our lives and our hearts for Christ to come this Christmas, that we might be fully transformed, and that we might be a transforming influence by carrying your Son out into the world. Sustain us by your Holy Spirit to do this work, to find the peace, to hold on to hope as we live lives in unity with your Son, Jesus Christ, who gave himself up for us not that we might be condemned, but that we might be saved. Saved from all of the things that separate us from you. And so we will join our voices together as one people, praying the way he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Here. And I now invite Carrie to return to lead us in the proclamation of the word. Here's the prayer of illumination. May your word bring peace to our hearts and minds. May your peace comfort us in our longing. May our longing lead to action to build your kingdom in our church, community, and the world. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from Exodus 3, 6 through 14. He continued, I am the God of your father, Abraham's God, Isaac's God, and Jacob's God. Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I've clearly seen my people oppressed in Egypt. I've heard their cry of injustice because of their slave masters. I know about their pain. I've come down to rescue them from the Egyptians in order to take them out of that land and bring them to a good and broad land, a land that's full of milk and honey, a place where the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites all live. Now the Israelites' cries of injustice have reached me. 
I've seen just how much the Egyptians have oppressed them. So get going. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I to go to Pharaoh and to bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God said, I'll be with you, and this will show you that I'm the one who sent you. After you bring the people out of Egypt, you will come back here and worship God on this mountain. God's special name. But Moses said to God, If I now come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, they are going to ask me, What's this God's name? What am I supposed to say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. So say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. Our second reading this morning comes from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18, the story of the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't distinguish the light. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him everyone would believe in the light. He himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. The true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. The light was in the world, and the world came into being through the light, but the world didn't recognize the light. The light came to his own people, and his own people didn't welcome him. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children. Born not from blood, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God. The word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified about him, crying out, This is the one of whom I said, He who comes after me is greater than me, because he existed before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. As the law was given through Moses, so grace and truth came into being through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. God, the only Son, who is at the Father's side, has made God known. The Word of God. Thanks be to God. God sent Moses because the Israelites in Egypt were oppressed. You ever feel oppressed? Sometimes I do. Am I really oppressed? Well, maybe not that much, but at least a little bit. In fact, I can often feel, believe, be absolutely certain that the worst is going to happen. You ever experienced that? I don't know why I feel that way so much more often than being so certain that the best is going to happen. But it does seem to be a little lopsided. And in fact, I'm not too bad about that. I, I, I keep on a pretty even keel. I know people who were slightly more um, angsty about life and the world. And there's certainly a lot of stuff to have angst about in the world, isn't there? It is broken. People are broken. And all too often, I'm broken. But yet there are moments, there are times when I experience something so deep and so profound 
that I can just simply let myself be. One of my earliest memories of experiencing that kind of peace was when I was very little a long time ago. And, and maybe many of you have had this experience too, but sometimes my family would be out somewhere and it'd be kind of late and as we're driving home, I would fall asleep in the back seat. Um, I am old enough that car seats were maybe not even around, but certainly not mandated. But yet I knew by the turns we were making when we were getting close to home, and invariably I would wake up a few blocks away from the house, but I would pretend to be asleep. You ever do that? Because what I wanted was that my dad, when we got home, would pick me up and carry me in the house. And I would pretend to be asleep so that he wouldn't make me walk. But it wasn't because I didn't want to walk, it was because I wanted to be held in the secure arms of my dad, knowing the love that was there, experiencing his care, his gentleness, his presence. That was peace. I was just in heaven because I knew how much, I could feel <clears throat> how much, I could experience how much I was loved and cared for. But often, when I'm not asleep on the back seat of the car as a child, I don't have that feeling. I don't have that experience, and if it's been a while since I have felt so loved, then peace is absolutely the last thing that I can feel. I can only imagine how people who live in truly dire circumstances must find peace a rare, rare experience. For the people in Israel and Palestine, for the people in Ukraine and Russia and in all the places in the world, and there are so many of them, where violence is a reality. How can you feel peace when you don't know if a bomb is going to go off right on your head? And you don't have to be in some faraway land. In our own communities, there is so much violence. How can you have peace when you don't know if you're going to be robbed or shot? And for those of us who are parents, how can you have peace when you don't know what's going to happen to your children when they go out into the community, into their neighborhood? I spent a Friday, a portion of Friday with my sister who was talking about how being a child, nobody feared for us to be out playing in the yard, but now she worries so much about her grandchildren and great-grandchildren being outside unsupervised. And for any of us, at any moment, Life can change. Far too many of us place our hope in our retirement accounts and depend upon the market, or we depend upon a job living paycheck to paycheck, or we depend upon all sorts of worldly things to give us a sense of security. And security is, is nice, it's good. But it's not quite peace. It's not quite. The Israelites cried out to God. The people 
in John the Baptist's time, when Jesus was born and living his ministry, they too were crying out to God. In their case, it was the Romans who were oppressing them. For the ancient Israelites, it was the Egyptians. And we too are oppressed, but not so much by some great empire. The truth is, we are the great empire. We are oppressed by our own fear. We are oppressed by consumerism. We are oppressed just because we are. And yet, just like God heard the cries of the Israelites and sent Moses, and just like God sent His Son Jesus to us, we have hope, or at least reason for hope. God did not leave his people in the past alone. God sent Moses, God sent John the Baptist, and God sent his son to tell us ultimately one message. No matter who God sends, God is already here with us. We just need to be reminded of it from time to time because in reality, you and I are being held by our Father right now, holding us even more tightly and securely than my dad held me, loving us even more deeply and completely than any human could love. We are not alone. We can have the peace that passes understanding at any moment when we are just reminded that God is with us. God delivered the Israelites from Egypt, and yet everything was not perfect in this world. They had to contend with the difficulty of the desert. They had to contend with the promised land being not so easy to move into. They had to contend with their own doubts, their own fears, and all of the human condition that went along with them. But at no point were they ever without God's love, God's presence. On this wall, the words to either side speak of God's presence with the people, to remind us of God's presence here now. And yet so often we miss it. So often we fail to trust it. John talks about the light coming into the world and the people not recognizing the light. And that's all too often true for us. And yet, even if all we see around us is darkness, the light is still here. Darkness is the absence of light. Light is not the absence of darkness. So just because we can see the darkness in the world doesn't mean that the light is not here. And peace is the same way. Just because we see conflict doesn't mean that there is no peace to be had. Because conflict is the lack of peace. Peace is not the lack of conflict. Just like light is not the lack of darkness. Peace is with us whether we recognize it or not. The conflict cannot take away our peace unless we let it go. But whatever we do, whether we're aware of God's presence or not, God is with us and God is holding us. 
And we have every reason to have peace, even while the world is still broken. And I will witness to the fact that one of the things that gives me peace is that God sends. God sent me to you and you to me. God sent us here to be witnesses to the light and the peace of God. God sent us here to be a voice in our community telling people about God's presence. The Christmas season, the Advent season, we celebrate Emmanuel, God with us. If God is with us, how can we not have peace? If God is with us, how can we not follow where God sends? God sent Moses, and he didn't want to go. God sent John, and people thought he was weird. I have never had that experience of people thinking I'm weird, but I can imagine it. God sends you and me to share with people the peace that we know. Moses didn't always feel all that peaceful as he was on that mission. And I don't think John the Baptist always felt that peaceful when he was on his mission. And even at times, Jesus did not seem to be at peace when he struggled in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he overturned the tables. Jesus struggled. And you and I struggle. But the struggle does not mean we don't have peace. Because our peace is not found in things being peaceful. Our peace is found in the one who is with us, the one who is holding us, carrying us, loving us, and leading us. Let us recognize the presence of God. Let us remind each other of the presence of God. And let us live out the presence of God. We have a lot of things that we're anxious about. What will become of our church and of Widmar? What will happen in the future? Where will it be? What will it do? How will we pay the bills? And on and on and on. And those are important questions to resolve. But at the heart of every one of those questions should be this statement. Through it all, He is with us. Through it all, we are loved. Through it all, God is leading. Many of us, myself included, want to know what the future holds. I want all the answers. I want to be able to put myself at peace but I'm selling myself short when I do that because I can't ensure any peace. I can't ensure any outcome. I can't do anything except trust God. God who has always been there. God who has always provided. God who has always led and sent. So let us trust God because He is here. He is with us. The light burns in the darkness, and the darkness has not put it out. So let us together profess our shared faith in that light with the Apostles' Creed. Almighty God, we live in... I'm sorry, wrong page. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. 
The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. When you saw the Israelites' oppression and heard their cries of pain, you revealed yourself and sent a deliverer to lead them to freedom and to restore peace to their lives. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, he is your holy and living word who brings grace and truth to us. In him you are truly revealed. We pray, Lord, that you pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, that we might not only recognize your life, your light, but shine its peace into the places of brokenness and violence in this world. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your Spirit, to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now as the ushers prepare to receive the offering, I invite you to be at peace. To offer God your trust. Trust God with your resources. But trust God with your heart and your life and your future. Give all of your worries, give all of your doubts, give them to God to carry, because he will carry them lovingly and gently. Ushers, please come forward. Almighty God, we live in a chaotic world filled with misery and tears. We remember how you heard the Israelites' cries and sent Moses to deliver them from bondage. We remember that John the Baptist calls us to construction projects. We are reminded we are called to prepare the way, to be the designers of peace, the builders of justice, the producers of kindness. As we bring our tithes and offerings to you, we pray that our giving continues to point to the Christ, the light who comes in love and compassion. 
May our giving in this season reflect our hope for the promised kingdom to reign in our world. We pray this in the name of the Messiah, Jesus, our Savior. Amen. And please remain standing as you are comfortable as we sing our closing hymn, which will be verse 1 of It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. Throughout Advent, each week, we are having a different breakthrough prayer uh, specific to that week's theme. So uh, as we pray this prayer, um, know that it's just for a week. If you did not get one of the uh, cards, they will be out there. And of course, the prayer is on the screen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for all the ways you reveal your presence in our lives. Thank you for being the I am who centers our lives. Lord, we need a breakthrough in our ability to faithfully communicate the peace of your presence in our personal lives, in our community, and in our world, turmoil and violence Shout down those who reach for peace. Help us to be a people certain of the power of your peace. Help us to break through the barriers to peace. Help us to know how to bring your peace to others. Amen. And now today, as we leave, it is fitting that we wish that we give that we offer peace to one another so our closing will be singing shalom which is number 666 in the hymnal and as you sing it offer the words the thoughts the feelings to god but also sing this to one another shalom Thank you.